Good morning, it's Vaughan at westcoatwellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, I'm actually going to make some slab built trays today because I've made a lot of frames recently and I've still got some to fire. And they're nice to fill up the shelf because the frames take off the whole shelf but there's always a gap in the middle and maybe a little bit around the edges. So I want to make a bunch of tiny little trays which I call kiln fillers and you know I sell them for 15 to 25 dollars so it's a, a good source of income as well. Um, but it just totally makes sense to fill that kiln when you fire it. Uh, so I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to slab, slab roll out by hand and I've got a slab roller which I'm going to do the other one. Um, and a quick thing I just wanted to show you. Uh, somebody asked a question about studio in their house kind of thing. Um, I bought this filter machine here. I got this on Amazon um, and it gives me a readout parts per million 2.5 um, so it counts the dust particles. Do I trust this? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it does say that. So, um, but it's a filter inside, a HEPA filter. There's like double layers and in, inside the thing here where it sucks the air in. Um, and you have to clean that every so often, but, but this is, you know, inexpensive. It was like $240, I think. Um, and it gives you different speed things. So now you can hear it. So if you've got a dusty environment, turn this on for a while, especially if your studio is in the house, it makes total sense, good sense then to have that. Let's slow it down a bit now. There you go. I'm not doing anything dusty at the moment. So you need two sticks. These are quarter inch. Um, and you, I, I had a log of clay, which I cut down uh, to make it a bit easier to roll rather than, this is pugged clay, obviously. Um, and then put your sticks just far enough apart so the roller can go over them and then just start rolling. I'll try and get out of your way, I suppose. Sticks going a bit too wide, so clay's a bit too wide. As long as you can get the roller onto the actual thing, so if you get it a bit too wide, you can just bang it in a bit. So quarter inch, I kind of consider the thickest you should do for a little tray like this. Otherwise the tray gets heavy. Just barely on the sticks at the moment. So those who are chefs, recognize this is how you make pastry okay so that's how you do it with that and there's a piece of plastic obviously you've got to roll it on a piece of plastic there on a smooth wooden board but that's pretty straightforward uh, who made this slab roller I don't even remember where I got this one somebody will recognize it anyway but I actually make a little ramp out of the clay And if you want the slab to be a square slab, thicken up the edges like this. Same on the other side. Because I've noticed that the, when you use a slab roller, like in that piece I just rolled there, it always seems to make an oval rather than a square. Okay, so we've got a piece of clay, which is very irregular at the moment, but it's thicker here and thicker here to compensate for the thicknesses in the center. So we should end up with a more of a square shape and it'll be very irregular square, of course. So a piece of plastic underneath the clay, different slab rollers have different things. And then pull the clay up to make sure you've got the blanket through properly. A lot of times blankets can get trapped up in the roller and then you just roll through. And then I push it back and go back 
I don't know. I think it just evens up the pressure in the slab itself, the, te the stress and the tension. And there we go. It's a pretty close square slab rather than a big oval. See, here's the one I rolled by hand. It is definitely an oval, and that's because I didn't do that with that. And this one is much more of a square. So we've got our slabs. Okay, before I get going on the slab texturing and stuff, people are all constantly asking me for glaze recipes and stuff, and I post, I, I will email them to if you, a photograph in my glaze page, uh, book, glaze book page, but these are the books I get everything from. So that one, most of them are out of this one. A few of them, including the purple, are out of this one, or is, yeah, this is this one, I think, yeah. And in fact, I bet the purple is right there. But anyway, I recommend getting these books, but they're really well laid out with the recipes and the color and everything. Purple Passion Plot, there you go. And that, that's maybe not the one I'm using though, but, but there's one. Um, yeah, I can't think. I think it's that one, Persian Papal Passion Plot. Uh, but there's another one right there as well. So that book, you should get that one. And then this one is really useful as well. Uh, so some of my recipes come out of there. And this one is really good. So that's another one. And even one of these books will give you a lifetime supply of glazed recipes. So, so that's what I recommend if you're looking for glazed recipes is just get these books or one of them. Texturing clay. Um, you can basically just buy commercial textured rollers and things. And there are lots of these around. Um, I have a few of these because every so often I just feel like, oh, that looks interesting. I might try that one. So you can actually spend a lot of money buying all these. Uh, I think they're made by MKM, some of them. And some of them I just found on Amazon. That was just a little thing on Amazon. But, um, but anyway, there's a whole bunch of those available. You can then decide if you want to have fun and just make stamps. I mean, I have masses of little clay stamps that you know, from figurative looking stamps of houses and flowers to actual abstract type things. So these are much more fun and much more personal. So your uh, pottery will start to look like your pottery and not like everybody else's. So that's the, the, the recommended way of doing it. Um, and you can also go shopping and find fabric, textured fabrics that you can roll into your clay this is a piece of gutter leaf keeps the leaves out of gutters and all that so that one there burlap oops burlap here uh, shelf liners this one's very useful I use that quite a bit um, but just go to your local thrift store and just look what they have I mean there's just so many choices this is what you, you they get oranges and apples wrapped in sometimes and that would work too um, don't want to have things too deep if you're doing textures um, because food traps gets trapped into the texture but there are e these these are from a wallpaper shop I think um, or a, a your paint shop um, and you just press this into the the plaster or something when you're putting plaster on um, and these give you really nice textures as well so that is a reason to go and spend an hour in a hardware store or a craft store whatever and just look for texture things so that's the um you know it's fun to do that basically but the reason of course is you want your pottery to start looking like your pottery and not somebody else's so you get your own selection of uh, textures what i'm gonna do i've got all these i got five of these later rolled out i think now uh yep five of these is i'm going to texture the entire slabs of all five randomly without any plan um, and I'm going to cut them into shapes that I'll then put over little slump molds so I will put you on some fast motion uh, stop motion uh, so you can see me doing this and then we'll talk about the textures Okay, here's a picture of my stamps a little bit more close up. 
Um, so there's a whole bunch of those, and then I have those commercial ones that I bought from MKM, I think they are. And, and actually some were found on Amazon. Here's some of the textured rolled clay slabs that I've been doing. A bit more close up on those. So there was no plan here, it's just playing. There's nothing wrong in playing. Some of the best things happen by surprises. Unplanned mistakes, happy accidents. So, uh, so we have to leave room in our life to make some happy accidents. So basically I was using some commercial rollers there, but I'm trying to mix them up so that they're not as is. The next thing that I want to show you is I have made over the years lots of tiny little styrofoam slump molds of all sorts of sizes. And I cut it, it's a, it's an, a one inch or a two inch piece of styrofoam eight by four feet when you buy it. And you can cut it up into little sizes, squares, rectangles or whatever you want. Um, and then I have a bandsaw, so that's tricky if you don't have access to a little bandsaw. It's just a hobby bandsaw that I bought for like 150 bucks. Um, but it cuts, you know, at different angles. So I can bevel the edges of these, which I would suggest you do. You can actually sand this stuff very easily. So if you don't have a bandsaw, take the stuff outside and sand it. Don't sand it where you're breathing this, the dust. Um, and you can just make a lot of these. You can cut this stuff with a regular saw in like 10 seconds. So um, just, you know, because it's a tenant, what we used to call a tenon saw. Um, so it's easy enough to cut. Any kind of saw will cut it. Um, but I would suggest you make all sorts of sizes because I have a lot of choice when I do this. Um, I can actually just find one that fits a piece of clay um because i've cut them all sorts of sizes so i don't waste much clay when i'm doing it um but i would suggest you do that um and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to place these on here to see what my layout for sizing is going to be um and i simply put them down um so that i can kind of judge how many i'm going to get from each um one of these shapes and then I might take some off because I'm using up too much clay or I'm going to waste some. So here, I could probably, if not, don't use that. I can get more of those in. But I like to do assorted sizes. So, so I think what I'll do is I'll place, oh, I've already got one square there. But I'll do. So I've placed these pieces of styrofoam down over the actual slabs and cut in between. Um, this one, for this one here, I'm going to refine my cutting a little bit now because the edges, I, I don't want to let it naturally, you know, be totally um, the way I rolled it out. Although you could. Save your scraps, don't let them dry out. And I like to do a cut that has a sort of curve to it rather than a straight cut. Because if you try cutting straight, it will look like you could, you didn't cut it very straight. So. I like to prefer make it look like I intended it not to be straight. Okay, so that one is like that, and then I don't like the edges to be really thick the way the edges are on that piece there. So then, even though it's textured, I take a roller and I just basically bevel the way I position the roller to thin the edge. Okay, so I rolled down the edge, you know, just a centimeter all the way around. 
um, and then I can place that in the center and look at it fairly closely. It's a bit further over this side. Uh, maybe a bit over that side. I'm trying to get it just fairly centered. It doesn't have to be ident you know, completely center. And then lift it up carefully so you don't move it. It's stuck to the paper again, so you gotta release it. And then turn it over. And then just before you press it down, just judge the size and maybe move it over just a touch. Try not to move too much because it will actually damage your texture a little bit. And then I put it on a wheel, just because it's easy to move around. And then press gently. Now you don't have to make it touch the mold. Uh, the styrofoam itself is just there to support it. You can actually have it totally touch if you want to. But I just like to have it loosely draped over it. If you want it to be a bit more accurately paddle, paddle it. Just tap it down and that will make it take the form of the mold a little bit more. But I always find those a little bit too tight, so I just like them loose like this. And then the very bottom, you, without pressing too hard, just smooth out your bottom a little bit. It's not that nasty anyway. Okay, so now we've smoothed out the bottom a little bit. I just gently rub a, a damp sponge over the edge. just to kind of clean it up a little bit. You can do this when it's a bit more dry as well, because at the moment it's fairly soft. I only rolled the slabs out like less than an hour ago. Clean up anything else you feel like might be nasty on there. And even though it's soft, it will hold its shape a little bit. Um, this on here a second and then carefully pull out your mold and this was heavily textured so I'm gonna have to fill the piece up quite a bit with glaze because with food of course you don't want too heavy a texture see how that goes down you could leave it if you want to but you can actually just straighten it up a little bit And that is what I call a kiln filler. So it will hold glaze in all those crevices and fill them up so it won't be quite as textural as it looks. Um, but that all depends on how you glaze it. So um, let's give you a closer look. It's on a piece of paper, so all I can do, I don't have to lift it up again, I'll just slide it over onto a wooden board. Um, and that's one. I want to make 25 of these today. So we'll see how I get on. I'll just do one of these smaller ones now. I've got this piece of clay there, so I'm just cutting between those two little tiny ones. Let's lift the mold off a second. So it's separated from the and I'm just going to cut. I just don't like the corners being too sharp on these. So that's why I'm saying cut with a, you know, you can just cut the corners off a little bit to sort of round up the edge a little bit if you want to do it that way. If you, cut, you end up with a sharp corner, it's no big deal anyway. I'm sure some people would actually think that's nicer. I just like to feel like it's got some slightly round edges. So that's the same. I'm going to take my little roller. I don't know where I got this roller from. It might just be a kitchen store.
and then it's probably sticking to the paper again now because of that pressure. Place that on, try and get it eyeball so it's fairly even, looks pretty good. Flip it over. Either do this, and I'm sort of gently pushing the clay towards the corners a little bit from this from the middle of the wall to the corner and that kind of helps it form a nicer shape a little bit when you do it like this you don't have to paddle them and so you don't want the the wall of the piece to be too wide otherwise it touches the bat and that's another thing you might want to do that so it has a flat rim too but I don't do that because I'm looking for small kiln fillers but if you decide after you've done it for a while you just want to tap it with a paddle you can and then you smooth it off and then put it in your hands and just take your wet damp sponge Drag it backwards and forwards a little bit just to smooth off your rim. I don't know, I think a lot of people buy a little thing like this sometimes because it's easy to carry and they just want a nice little gift. They're traveling. This is a tourist area, remember, so I have to think about how people are gonna get my work to their homes. This is so small. I can probably fit it on the other one. Let's go over. There we go. That saves space in my code. I've got two of them together.
Okay, um, I got all my little trays done and I thought just for the fun of it I'm going to try a piece I haven't made for a long time. I mostly did this with my pottery classes. So I've rolled a slab a little thicker than three quarters. Sorry, a little thicker than a quarter. And I'm now just thinning the edges a little bit. Not too much. Just to make it a touch bigger and make it so it's thicker in the center than it is at the outer edge. And then using my knife, I'm going to randomly, in about, in about, I don't know, a centimeter or two, I'm just cutting with a wavy line. So I rolled this slab really well. It ended up being a very nice square. Pull off all this clay. This is the pugged clay. It's really doing well. Well, I should have probably. Yeah, it's not pulling off as fast as I'd hoped. Maybe I should peel it off later, but I thought it would just lift right up. Isn't it gonna be, be awkward there? Sometimes the clay even there we go. I just wanted to be awkward. So that pug mill is basically, I'm just going to put that right in the pug mill. I can't tell you how much I'm so happy about this new pug mill. Because it means that all the scraps don't have to be soaked down and then dried out before you put them in. You just throw them in like that. And store it for a few days till you build enough scraps up. Anyway, let's uh, going to use this little roller. Just to round off the edge at the top, so it's a little thinner. There you go. And then when I sponge it, it'll be nicer, of course. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be the inside of a bowl, so I'm just going to smooth it a little bit. I've got a couple of textural things that I'm going to do. This is where the foot of the inside of the football will be. And so I've got these stamps of flowers. My wife made these. Uh, and I am going to use them as much as I can before they get too wet.
Um, I'm trying to think if they will work on the top here. Yeah. Am I able to be seen here? So it gives the impression of, of leaves. It's the first time I've done this, so I'm guessing two. Um, I could probably go in and retouch in some of these. Some of them have faded out just a touch. Although I may as well just put a few more in anyway. Clay is uh, not too so ticky, I guess. A few, more, a few more of these too. There we go. At the bottom of the bowl, I think I'm just going to leave like it's to be where the, the bottom part is basically so but that's my texture what do you think looks nice um, it could be nice for anything yeah but um, but anyway next is the big big lift okay what I've got now is one of my bisque bowls uh, it's just a bowl I threw on the wheel and I bisque fired it and and so it's still porous a little bit um, because I can do these where I just leave it uh, right on the bisque de bowl, but I put a piece of plastic um, around it this time. Um, it dries faster if you don't use that piece of cling film saran wrap. Um, and I have to flip this upside down. Um, and then I have here some, a, 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 you know, a tower made of some collars that I threw for my trimming wheel. Uh, which I'm going to put this, I measured them, this fits right inside there. Uh, and then we'll drape this over the top of there. So let's set you up a little further away so you can see, I'm not sure if you'll see me flip this or not. Okay. So we've got that, I'm going to flip it upside down. to put the bowl over the tower and to get it level so we've got this bowl with a slab and I'm going to try now gently peel this off because the plastic is holding it So this is draped over the top. So I'm now going to make some folds. I'll have to sponge the back of this quite a bit. So I'm making folds here without denting the inside. I don't want to dent the inside. And I have a box full of old sponges here, which I'm going to stick lightly underneath where I'm folding. I haven't made one of these in a very long time. I used to do it with my evening class.
So now I've got it with a lot of folds. I'm going to, without wetting it down, I do not want to get this wetter because the clay is actually quite soft, which is why it's been causing quite a lot of problems. But, um, but I'm just trying to get rid of the creases. So I've got a fairly stiff bristle brush. Not natural hair, it's actually, a, it's the one I put handles on actually. And I'm just brushing over the surface. So this is a long job of brushing now just to get rid of all the textures. The, these textures probably wouldn't have happened if I'd used thinner, uh, you know, the, rip, the creases and everything because I was using thick wrap, uh, plastic paper, um, plastic sheet. So maybe you should use a thinner plastic sheet. That's my lesson. I haven't done these in three, four years. Okay, I just threw a small um, wide bowl. As you can see, it's upside down on the top of that um, form now. Um, so, um, so that is going to be the foot that this bowl sits on. Um, so I threw it, put it right on top of here so it's very soft. Um, and I just cut through it. That's why these hops are so useful. And then all I have to do is just brush it. Uh, it's kind of a shame that I would have to destroy that nice, neat little thing there. But this one I have to press down. And I won't be able to turn this the right way up till tomorrow. Because obviously the walls are very soft. And that's why I use the sponges because they will compress while this is shrinking overnight. And they won't hopefully crack the piece with the pressure. We used to use toilet rolls to stuff underneath these, but they do leave a little bit of a mark where the edge of the toilet roll would perhaps um, dig into the clay on the inside. So I've lit, I'm trying to leave the top ring so it's nice and neat. the edge of the bowl. That's pretty nice. And then I can do the same on the inside, but I will use a different tool for that. Maybe this will work. So the inside there has to be joined as well on the inside part. And then I just use a sponge to smooth off. It's very soft, I just threw it, but I left it fairly thick. And that's it.
So here we go. I made 27 um, by three o'clock. Um, and, uh, and I made that big floppy ball and now I'm gonna throw a few mugs. Let's get you over here so you can see these ones. They're all basically individual because of the way I decorated the slabs. But, um, and they will just be called kiln fillers to put around the large frames. So some of them have some figurative elements. There's a few fish floating around in some of the textures. When they've got the glaze on them, they, they kind of look fossil-like. Okay, uh, this is the following morning, and I allowed it to dry out a bit in my damp cupboard, so not naturally drying, but slowed down so it wouldn't get too dry. And when I lifted it out, the sponges have just been falling out because um, it actually um, isn't flopping over them anymore. And it shrank a bit, I'm surprised. But anyway, all you've got to do at this point, if it's not squeezable, it must be firm, so you can't actually bend it. Um, you just lift it. And then don't put too much pressure on your base, sort of lift it the right way up. Ooh. And then place it down. Let's move this out of the way. Get that shiny on it a bit. And that's what I call a floppy ball. And all that. So, and it hasn't cracked yet, but quite often, if you're not careful and you have your texture right up to the rim, and I got really close to the rim, uh, you can have cracks creeping down the actual lines of the texture. See, the, the texture went right up to the edge. I made two more, um, and that those ones I tried not to do that. No, that was good, actually. So I, then I'm now just going to get a sponge, and I'm going to sponge the rim all the way around. But you can see, if we can light this right, see the texture when the glaze hits all that texture in there that'll be very attractive especially if i do it in greens and blue so it's like a natural landscape but these are pretty easy to do for somebody who wants to have a big piece and uh, isn't capable of throwing a big piece you can hand build it you need to be able to throw the base but you could coil the base too so you know that's not essential you can even throw the base so so good luck trying it of course you can make small ones to start this was a giant one. This is the second one that I'm going to try today. So I'm going to repeat the exact process, but this is with brand new clay, uh, not recycled. So I'm going to see whether there's a little easier. And I took it off the plastic first um, because that was harder to peel off a form vertical. So while it was flat, I just peeled the plastic off and I put it onto a piece of newspaper and then textured it. So now I'm going to put the bowl in the middle like this. Do I need a piece of plastic? Yeah, I probably should put the plastic over too. This is just a precaution. I don't think it needs it because a bisque piece would just release anyway. <clears throat> and this clay should have stiffened up a little bit overnight. So, so let's see what happens. Uh, do I need this inside there? I think. Put that inside there first. So now the paper should peel off a lot easier.
This is the third one, and it's still stuck to the plastic. So this is all I did, so I didn't have to face that issue with the plastic being difficult to peel off. If I put it on paper, be careful it doesn't fold, but then when you see the plastic is free all along the edges, peel it off. I have to flip it back onto another piece of paper. I'm just going to smooth off the back, which will help when I have to smooth it later on. Easy to do it now than when I've actually got it on the hump. I've got to find some leaves of the bubble wrap to support it because I don't have any more big sponges from the other one. So I'll use some rolls of bubble wrap. Make sure you get rid of anything that could encourage a crack. And this one, where's my knife? This one hasn't been cut into a round yet. Well, not a round, but a, a weekly round. So there's the thickness, and I didn't do that on the other piece. I didn't thin the edge, but I'm just gonna roll this lightly so I don't have it too thick and looking too square at the end. Because I don't, if it's thin, it encourages cracks. If it was really thick, it would look too clunky. So it's a balance. Whoop, going off my wheel. So that's just a little bit there. And it's all textured, it's bumpy because of the texture that's on the other side. So then I put a piece of paper over it again. And then flip it. A pottery can never have too many boards. There we have our texture again. All right, now we've got to find all the parts. So I've got it supported with gentle curves all the way around. So there's nothing that's like a right angle type curve. Uh, and then I'm just going to go up and try and encourage my valleys to go a bit deeper. Bottom. To do something different with this video of hand building, because I don't do very much hand building myself, um, but I like to have some hand built pieces in my gallery because just look something different to look at and people always wonder like who makes all this stuff how many people work here but I was I try everything I like to do a lot of things um, and, and I've been doing it for 50 years so it's like you know I've got to keep myself interested trying new things yeah I'm actually uh, gonna glaze those big floppy balls that I did the other day um, so uh, I'm gonna sponge stamp them um, with uh, apple green bright blue 
uh, my matte turquoise, and I may touch up a little bit with oatmeal or some yellow, but um, but basically it's a, it's a sponge stamp, it's stamping, so I'm going to put you on a stop motion so you can see it done. Um, but it's just the glazes in, I'll show you, got little glazes in jugs. Uh, let's get you down there. They just got out of the bisque fire, basically, so all my glazes are in pots like this with a little sponge that I'm going to be sponging them with. So, um, so, and then, you know, just put them in the glaze firing. Okay, now I've got the whole inside done. I'm going to pour the glaze. This is quite a thick glaze too. See, like this is a big piece of glaze. Turn it around as far as I can. So you try and pour it on the piece instead of on the floor. Your base is attached really well to the top. I think that's plenty. The bottom, I'm just going to paint the glaze on after it gets a bit drier. Okay, this is the last one, it was the smallest of the three, so I'm going to make this one a little different and I'm going to add some folk art white in where the flower heads are and it will be sponged over a little bit in places but this should give it a little extra glow Oh, you mackerel. <laughs> well, I think that turned out pretty nice. And you've got the texture showing through. 
where the blue is and you've got the folk art white where it has that sort of orangey yellow look and I rubbed the glaze back uh, over those areas and then glazed the folk art white over so that um, it's over the regular clay rather than over the green and the blue and I'm glad I did because it turned out really nice so what it's like an explosion isn't it the galaxy supernova oh wow yeah very nice yeah, I haven't made these in a very long time. I used to teach my class how to do it when I used to teach classes. Um, so, uh, and they always love doing this project. Feels like it didn't stick to the kiln shelf. Good. And this is out of pugged clay too. Um, one of them was out of pugged clay and the other two were new clay. So I think this was the first one I made. But once again, the texture, it's supposed to be the garden, it's a cottage garden. And uh, and then you have, because I live on the ocean, that's why I did the sort of wavy look for the blue, a garden on the ocean. That turned out very nice. So this project is really a nice project to do, but you'll have to get used to the floppy clay and judging just how soft it should be. I usually roll the clay out right from the slab roller and then turn it over upside down. Um, give it a, a, a couple of hours to stiffen up a little bit from being rolled out and then it should be fine. But bright blue on the outside and then I've got matte turquoise, apple green and bright blue and then rubbed off the top areas a little bit just outside so you don't breathe that dust in and, uh, and then just glaze folk art white by stamping over the top. Really pretty, it's an explosion of color.